Is it a trap? Let's get into it. So today, guys, we are going to be taking a cheeky look at the crypto space. We'll be having a look at a few key things, such as the fear and greed index for the entire crypto space, the Bitcoin dominance, the Bitcoin chart, see what other analysts are also talking about, having a cheeky look at Cardano, and then trying to roll it up together to see whether or not we are still in a bull run and whether or not this is actually a trap. So... If, as always, guys, if you do find this video useful and informative, do go ahead and hit that like button. We both really do appreciate it. And of course, if you happen to be new to the channel and you want to stay up to date with all those new cryptocurrencies, those hidden gems, the technical analysis and news, then do become a subscriber. By becoming a subscriber, you'll be kept up to date with absolutely everything we do here. It is free. You'll stay well informed. So why not? And Chris, uh, anything else you would like to add before we jump right on into it? Yeah, just really interested to know what, what your views and opinions are. Do you think we're we're in a sort of a, a bear trap or do you think we're going into the bear market? Let us know how fearful you are or are not. Fantastic. Let's get on into it. Let's do it. All right, guys, here we have the fear and greed index. So again, this one is actually dropped down again today. Um, at 12. Now, this is obviously slightly higher than the initial crash, which was actually a fear index of 11. Um, yesterday, it was 19. It had actually increased a little bit. And then today, um, based on the performance of yesterday, we have a fear and greed index of 12. Now, ultimately, guys, this means that there's a lot of fear out there, but it's not always in the most obvious places. Obviously, Bitcoin's incredibly fearful. Not a lot of people realize what's going on over there. And as a result, obviously, lots of kind of selling is going on. Yet whales have been actually purchasing up $5.5 billion of that fear. So a lot of people have been liquidated during the Wyckoff um, and the last phase of that. So a lot of people have basically been, anyone who's in leverage was, was wiped out. Um, and obviously then whales have come in and basically scooped up all that additional Bitcoin. And that's kind of what led to a major recovery, a very quick recovery. Um, to push Bitcoin price back up. And obviously it has fallen back down again, um, as obviously you know, there's widespread fear out there in terms of uh, cryptocurrency. And you see this a lot with um, you know, various different YouTuber influencers or Twitter, where everyone's kind of claiming that it's now the bear market and everyone needs to be extremely fearful, blah, blah, blah. But now, ultimately, no, I don't think we're in the bear market. We are still in a bull market. You need to wait for it to see what happens next to know definitively whether you can claim that this is a bear market. I still think that uh, we are in a bull market. And the reason for this is is several. When you look at the, the technical data around us, we know that many of these altcoins have not actually gone on to even hit their all-time highs yet. So therefore, it's very unlikely that a bull market would end before that FOMO and that kind of... Um, you know, euphoria has actually gone anywhere. We, we've seen some pretty interesting numbers, but it's all been organic growth so far. And we haven't actually seen any of that FOMO uh, related activity that we used to see in previous bull runs. So for that is obviously one thing to, to kind of just call out. And so therefore, there's a huge opportunity here that for Bitcoin to actually go ahead and actually set another higher high. And this is what a lot of um, traders are talking about they're seeing this thing potentially go up towards that kind of eighty thousand dollar level um so there's still another all-time high here for bitcoin according to many uh we do have uh, i think it's willy Wu. uh this guy here he's come out and basically is talking about how um the overall upward trend uh has not ended um and why he doesn't think this and it's exactly like what we, what we just talked about right so um we haven't seen any kind of mania um it was a huge dump down from a highly organic level but no speculative premium and that's what you saw in 2017 top for example which was actually three point um, 8% higher than the organic evaluation. We have not seen any of that. So this is just the middle of a bull market, um, you know, and ultimately it's, it's kind of pent up demand for a correction because we've been buying up Bitcoin on every single dip very quickly that we haven't actually had a, con a considerable amount of time for a correction to actually set in. So therefore you kind of have this huge demand for a correction and then obviously it happens, right? So um, that's where we are currently, at least in my opinion, and also kind of aligns to, to what Willy Woo is talking about here as well. Um, so again, you, this has kind of then led to a very fearful market. And obviously as a result, 
loads of people are now saying it's the bear market when actually it's not it's if anything it's probably a bear trap chris uh, i would say um but nonetheless uh bitcoin's dominance has done exactly what we kind of thought it was going to do although it just happened a little bit earlier than we were expecting and this is something we've been speaking about quite a bit in terms of, of an accelerated path um for bitcoin now this particular correction may actually reset that thing uh, and reset that kind of bull run into uh, the four-year cycle that actually should be so i don't think the structure anything has really changed and this is actually potentially just the pent-up demand of all of these little baby corrections on this route that got bought up so quickly um, that now actually we're in a reasonable position here and uh, to take that back to where it needs to be so it's just a correction um, in many different senses of the word right it's a correction on price it's a correction on relative strength index it's a correction of volumes um, but also it's a correction on time uh, and timing is quite a crucial thing to bear in mind um, so right here this is bitcoin dominance right and we call this particular level out because this is where we actually bounced down um, previously so in 2017 we had the exact kind of sell off this huge drop in bitcoin dominance right that's what you're seeing here, Bitcoin dominance dropping. Um, and then there was a bounce from a level down here at 37. Okay, and this took it back up again before the altcoin season really kicked in. And we saw this then peak out with Bitcoin dominance dropping down to 32%. Now, what we've seen here is actually a drop down to 39%. And now we're going back up again. So my expectations here are that Bitcoin's dominance will come up and then we'll drop down to about 30 two maybe a little bit higher than that but it should be obvious when we see, start to see the peak now i'm not expecting that we would sell the peak ultimately you end up with a, a situation where we, you actually want to wait for the peak to kind of come in and then draw a fibonacci like this and then try to get the 618 area here and if you're doing that then you'll be able to be in a pretty good position on where you're likely to be able to sell so um very difficult to sell the top if you can fantastic if you can't then rely on your Fibonacci's to help you kind of get that set. So here in this particular run, we're looking to potentially bring Bitcoin's dominance up to about 59% um, around that area there before it goes ahead and drops back down again. So and um, just looking at things like that, it's going to be an interesting one to watch out. So right now, Bitcoin dominance is doing what we thought it was going to do. Or it's just doing it a little bit sooner than we actually anticipated. Okay, and then obviously from here, it will go ahead and drop back down once again to get to those really low levels and Bitcoin dominance level. Okay, so that's actually to go in according to plan. There's nothing strange about that. That's exactly what you would expect to see anyway. And then we hop back into Bitcoin's chart here before we get into the Cardano stuff. Um, with Bitcoin, we are seeing, you know, this level here, we actually came down to 29,900. So basically, you know, 30K uh, low. And... Um, it's exactly 30k in fact a low level there and you know ultimately we're now looking to pull this back up because you're not going to move down straight down to 20k which loads of people are talking about or 28k that's not going to happen normally you come down you go back up again right uh, and what you tend to find here is you go up to about the 702 uh, or the 618 it's usually one of these couple of levels here um so we're, talk we're calling out like 48k right so 48k is going to be an interesting area or 50k is going to be an interesting area in that zone and what that's going to mean is you're going to move up to here and then a decision is going to be made whether or not you're going to set a lower low or continue to move up right and um, so that's what you're going to find it's going to be in that zone just there and in order to figure that out you need to wait for this thing to actually come up to that level and then we'll know definitively whether or not we're going to drop back down and if we do start to decline from these levels there's a high expectation that we then go ahead and drop down lower than that 30k but we will not know that until we come up to these levels and we know what the demand and what the sentiment in the market is looking like it could well be that actually we don't drop down again and actually now it continues back up and you know goes up to higher highs right above this yellow line breaking that downward trend altogether so we are watching this um, right now it's far too early to say that you're in a bear market i don't think we are in a bear market um, and even if we did set a lower low i think all you're really doing is just resetting the timelines resetting a few of those key indicators but the bull market as far as i'm concerned is definitely not over um, and is still you know, in full swing really um, so and we can see this from very various different um, altcoins and so if we just shoot down this list here we have Solve who shot up 180% today um, so 
you know, that's not bearish at all. Um, so there's still a few altcoins actually do, doing quite well under these circumstances. Um, so you have to be really mindful of what's going on in the space. What are you being told? What are the current narratives out there? And, you know, really do that research and dig in deeper to understand exactly what's going on. Um, they often say you, you, uh, you buy the fear and you sell the news. Okay, and uh, you're buying all the fear is what you should, in my, in my opinion, what you should be doing. But the second that people start saying you to buy it uh, or to buy up Bitcoin because it's going to half a million dollars or a million dollars, that's ultimately the, the news that you want to be potentially selling. Um, so it's important that you buy the fear and sell the news. But um, let's get into into this because this is, um, you know, really interesting stuff here for Cardano. So Cardano's Charles Hoskinson says he's now a crypto billionaire. So after a wild 2021 for crypto markets, Cardano's creator Charles Hoskinson says he's now a billionaire. Um, in a new Ask Me Anything session that uh, Charles did the other day or the AMA that he did the other day, um, it obviously does reference you know, how the, the market's been a bit of a bloodbath. Um, this week, um, you know, he's kind of pinning that on maybe new Chinese regulations. Um, you have obviously Hoskinson. Uh, Hoskinson was an early adopter, right? He was the co-founder of Ethereum, and um, you know, he is also you know the, the CEO and founder of IOG, which is obviously the company behind Cardano. Um, and when he was asked, you know, what it's like to be a billionaire, um, you know, Charles did say that. Um, he first scratched the surface in 2017 bull market. This is the quote, right? So it took me three years from when I first started, uh, or I started my first cryptocurrency company to become a millionaire. Um, and I was first a billionaire in 2017, very, very briefly. Uh, markets collapsed and everything went to hell, but I was doing okay. And then I became a billionaire again in 2021. So um, interestingly enough, you know, I think there's quite a few people who've potentially become billionaires during the 2021 bull run. Um, and I imagine that quite a few millions uh, were made during the sell-off period of, uh, of Bitcoin and many of these altcoins as well. Um, because you can make money whilst the needle goes up, but you can also make significant money whilst the needle goes down. You've got to bear that in mind from a trading point of view, you can profit in both directions. Um, so uh, I think there's been quite a few people. I don't think Charles Hoskinson's the only one, um, but it's it's an interesting kind of you know to see that he was also you know previously a billionaire. Um, what I'd be more interested to know is you know has he actually cashed any out into fiat or has he actually parked it into to uh, to crypto somewhere? Because um, that would be an interesting interesting thought. Um, but in terms of uh, the crypto price volatility this week, Hoskinson notes that uh, the magnitude of crypto's innovation uh, prevents markets from staying stable and clearly it's sorting out winning investments from a bus. Um, like the internet in previous decades, he explains it will take time before the industry leading projects emerge with stability. And I totally agree with that. There's not enough money here to make it stable. Um, so you do have to, you know, understand that uh, volatility is what drives this market at the moment in terms of profitability and why there's loads of investors here. Um, everyone speculates on coins going 10,000x or 1,000x or 100x or whatever it may be, right? Um, and it's that volatility that makes that possible and makes those profits possible. Um, if we go stable, then there will still be profits there, but they'll be much slower um, and, you know, there won't be these huge swings left and right. So where there is huge uh, rewards, there are huge risks as well. So it's important that you pay attention to what actually goes on in this space. Um, but Charles Hoskinson here does say, welcome to crypto. That's how crypto works. It goes way up. It goes way down. <laughs> you can't, guys can't get 900% gains without expecting some pullbacks. And it's exactly like that, right? Things that go up have to go down and things that go down have to go back up. Um, that is just how it works, unfortunately. Um, so when you take a look at Bitcoin today, it is oversold once again. So you do expect that thing to be moving back up again. Selling at the bottom is never a wise idea. Um, use the uh, technicals to help you with that. If you want to get out of the market, if it's not one for you, you're not comfortable with the swings, use the technical data to choose your exit points. Don't get emotional about it. Um, and really pay attention to what's going on. Um, so crypto is very volatile and it's very unstable. And as a consequence, understand that it's a frontier market. Um, and the point here is we're re re uh, reconstructing society. And we all know that by doing that, there are trillions, if not tens of trillions of dollars to, of collective value in the industry. 
um, but where does that value go uh, exactly? I'm, I'm not going to go into more of that, but it's an interesting thing. You know, it's worth calling out how Charles Hoskinson has now obviously become a billionaire um, again, technically speaking, but would be interested to know, you know, hopefully he t- intends to park it in crypto uh, and not uh, just, you know, pull it into fiat and all that kind of stuff. Um, but interestingly enough, if we take a look at Evi's platform here as well, uh, we can get into what's going on here with Cardano specifically, right? So Cardano's ADA um, is a C1 rating. Uh, and if we get down into why it's a C1 rating, we can see a little bit more of the detail. So Cardano's fear and greed index, this is a unique fear and greed index specifically for EVI. And um, this one's actually showing us a B3 rating, right? So whereas if we were to take a look at some of these other projects um, or if we looked at the entire crypto space here in terms of fear and greed it's extreme fear right um, but for cardano not so much and we did a whole video about why uh, or, or you know the fact that cardano has no fear those investors are not fearful of what's going on around them because there's this long-term mindset when it comes to cardano investors we can kind of see what uh, what we're investing in and we're investing in that long-term future of the platform and where charles hoskinson and the wider iog team is trying to take cardano right and um, so actually there's not a lot of fear here because we know that actually cardano has got a pretty good roadmap and I have faith that they're going to nail it. And as a result, there's very little fear in the space here for Cardano. Now, when we start looking at moving average, it's it's also very good. The sharp ratio could be better. It's actually a D here. So we do need to improve on the sharp ratio. Um, In terms of peak end demand, not too bad either. The profitability is an A1. Obviously, it's moved the needle quite significantly during 2021. Um, But one of the other areas that it um, it is struggling on at the moment is the Amihad ratio, which obviously is your liquidity. Um, So again, there's two areas here that really need focus, right? Obviously, you have your, your sharp ratio and you have your liquidity ratio so those are the two weaker areas at the moment for cardano but it's definitely not fear right so it's not going to be in that kind of state of that, that bitcoin's in where there's extreme fear um or in in the kind of whole crypto space as detailed here um you know being in extreme fear so it's an interesting one to point out that um you know cardano is actually pretty stable and i think that's down to the type of investments that people are making in cardano it is a longer term play it's not something you're going to flip and turn over whereas if you take bitcoin for example it's usually something that you're, you're going to be investing in specifically for the bull run or to store that value then you're going to flip out of it move it into a, or roll it into an altcoin and then potentially roll it back into bitcoin at the end right so um fearfulness tends to go with that because ultimately if it comes down and you haven't rolled out of bitcoin into altcoins then yeah there's going to be some fear there um but generally speaking when you've got a project that's on the scale of cardano um yeah there's not a lot of fear there because it is something that is more of a longer term play and don't get me wrong there's still profits to be made in 2021 um but ultimately the 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 bigger picture for cardano is a very very different and has huge profitability assigned to it in the future so yeah really wanted to call that out as well just looking at how cardano is not as fearful as the rest of the crypto space um, and really wanted to call out you know, how charles Hoskinson has become a billionaire again in 2021 and would love to know how uh, how he intends to go with that is he going to keep it in crypto um, and then fall out of the billionaire category again or is he going to um, do something else where that'd be interesting and obviously yeah bitcoin's dominance is doing exactly what we thought it was it's going back up um, altcoins are losing market share bitcoin is uh, in my opinion looking to like, go up to 48k before it has a decision to make us to continue to go up or to go back down ultimately the space here isn't as bad as um, it may appear if you just look at the charts um, alone so if you just looked at um, you know, coin market cap and you saw a sea of red i can see why that could be fearful but actually when you start looking at it in detail and start to really look at it logically rather than emotionally it's just not that bad so Chris, uh, that's everything I have on on obviously Cardano billionaires and the space as a whole. Anything you want to add? Just the you know the the sentiment is is fearful. However, you know it is still a bull market. I completely align with with all of that. And uh, yeah, I, I guess this is this is where money's made, right? These these sorts of uh, retracements are you know, great opportunities if you see them that way and the timing is good for, for yourself. Um, obviously, don't overextend yourself in the market. It's really important to, to say that. And, 
you know only invest what you're you're willing to to afford to to, to lose and uh we're not financial advisors so you know um take what we say with uh, a pinch of salt and uh i would say that's the same for all other youtubers as well <laughs> um you know we're really documenting you know our journey in this space and and nick and myself you know we're, we're putting our money where our mouths are right in the respect that we haven't taken profits yet so exactly. you know you would have you would have heard the 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 the, the tone of the channel change over the last few weeks, you know, uh, um, views on, you know, our strategy within the market was changing um, as we were getting to those sort of higher highs for some of these projects, you know, particularly like Matic and, and, and stuff like that. You know, you see in all these uh, retail investors flooding into to Dogecoin and, and stuff like this. It's, these are signs that, you know, you, you have to consider your strategy and just make sure that it's the right one. And, and Nick and myself were starting to look at projects that hadn't been listed yet, that hadn't gone live uh, as a change to, to, to our tactics or strategy. And, um, you know, you've got to sort of make sure that you're listening to, to what people are saying in respect of, you know, what what's the tone? Is it changing? Uh, I think that's like a, a key metric to, to sort of listen out for. Fantastic. Guys, hopefully you found this video useful, informative. If you did, then do go ahead and hit that like button. We both really do appreciate it. And of course, if you happen to be new to the channel and you want to stay up to date with those new cryptocurrencies, those hidden gems, the technical analysis and news, then why not become a subscriber? By becoming a subscriber, you'll be kept up to date with absolutely everything. It is free. You'll stay well informed. So why not? With that said, done and out of the way, we hope you have a fantastic day, guys, and we'll catch you in the next one. Yeah, take care.